Can Bill Parcells predict which quarterbacks will be stars and which ones will be busts? Legendary head coach and two-time Super Bowl champion Bill Parcell created a set of rules over his 19 years as a head coach to evaluate college quarterback prospects. The origin story on how he created his set of evaluation rules is relatively unknown right now, but one could imagine that he's seen a thing or two about scouting college players during his days of winning Super Bowls for the New York Football Giants and posting a lifetime overall record of 172 131 in one tie as the NFL head coach. The Big Tuna was heavily respected around the entire NFL landscape for many decades, so it makes sense that scouts and fans would recite his college quarterback evaluation rules even after he left the game. But that leaves us with a big question. Does Bill Parcells' QB rules withstand today's NFL game, and should they still be followed? Parcells evaluated college quarterbacks on seven key metrics. One, be a three-year starter. Two, be a senior in college. Three, graduate from college. Four, start 30 games. Five, win 23 games. Six, post a two to one touchdown to interception ratio. And lastly, number seven, complete at least 60% of their passes. To test whether these requirements can predict the future NFL quarterback success, we've gathered data on all the quarterbacks that were drafted in the first round of the NFL draft from the years 2010 to 2021. And for the sake of this video, we are only defining success as if the quarterback received a contract extension from the same team that drafted him. So reason being, if the quarterback was offered a contract extension towards the end of the rookie deal, then it's a sure bet that that player was not a bust. Of course, one metric that instantly stands out from Parcells rules is the college graduation requirement. You and I both know that a lot of first round caliber prospects don't stay in college for four years. So these prospects are less likely to graduate. And it proved to be difficult to confirm whether or not the prospects did graduate. Maybe they graduated during the time in college, or maybe they came back um, during the NFL career and finished their program. So we decided to re remove that requirement from our data. We did decide to keep the college senior requirement to stay as true to Parcells rules as possible. But a strong debate can be made about removing that requirement as well with regards to today's NFL game. We also kept out the three-year starter requirement too because that kind of coincides with players leaving school before their senior year. Um, so that leaves us, at least for the sake of this video, with five requirements from Parcells QB rules. And just to recap those requirements, they are be a senior in college, start 30 games, win 23 games, post a two to one touchdown to interception ratio, and complete at least 60% of passes thrown. There have been 39 quarterbacks selected in the first round of the NFL draft from 2010 to 2021. For the sake of this study, I've excluded Dwayne Haskins out of respect for him since his career and life was sadly cut short. Um, we are also going to assume that Tua, Trevor Lawrence, and Jordan Love will get extended by the Dolphins, the Jaguars, and the Packers. So all in all, we included 38 quarterbacks in this study. Out of the 38 qualifying quarterbacks, 16 of them were extended by the team that drafted them. So a 42% hit rate is actually not too bad. Out of the 16 quarterbacks who got extended, there was only one who was a perfect five out of five for Bill Parcells requirements. And that player is Justin Herbert. Three quarterbacks scored four out of five, and they are Andrew Luck, Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence. Five quarterbacks who got a contract extension scored a three out of five, and they are Patrick Mahomes, Carson Wentz, Jared Goff, Lamar Jackson, and Jordan Love. Six quarterbacks who received a contract extension from the team who drafted them received a failing grade of two out of five, and they are Blake Bortles, Cam Newton, Daniel Jones, Kyler Murray, Ryan Tannehill, and Tua. 
And yes, I'm only saying Tua because I always botch his last name, so I'm sorry, Tua. You just called Tua by me. There's only one quarterback who got extended by the team that drafted him and also scored only one point on Parcells' rules, and that is none other than the Wyoming Cowboy, Josh Allen. On the other hand, there were two quarterbacks who scored a perfect five out of five and did not get extended by the team that drafted them. And those players are Tim Tebow and Baker Mayfield. Some other notable high scorers who did not get extended by the team that drafted them are Mac Jones, Marcus Mariota, RG3, Sam Bradford, and Teddy Bridgewater. Parcells rules did somewhat accurately predict a couple of quarterbacks' fates in a bad way. And those quarterbacks are Mitchell Trubisky and Zach Wilson who both scored a two out of five. So can Bill Parcells' method predict the future? Does he have a magic eight ball that can tell him which college quarterback will be a future star or at least a solid franchise quarterback? Well, the data suggests that Parcells' ways um, is a bit outdated. Let's look at the two extremes to illustrate this point. Out of the 38 quarterbacks in our study, 12 of them scored a four or better and only four out of that 12 received contract extensions from the teams that drafted them. So a 33% hit rate. And out of the same 38 quarterbacks, 11 of them scored a two or lower, and seven out of that 11 received a contract extension. So a 64% hit rate. So all in all, there are more quarterbacks who tested really poorly and received a contract extension from the team that drafted them than those who tested really well against Parcells' method. We believe this is due to the fact that the NFL seems to be getting younger every year and top college talent is leaving the college game without a ton of experience. And the way the quarterback position is played and viewed is vastly different than when Bill Parcells was in his prime. Instead of propping up stationary game managers on a pedestal, quarterbacks in today's NFL landscape are expected to be game changers and be the reason why their team wins games. They are expected to improvise when play breaks down, make off-platform throws, drive the ball downfield constantly, or just be excellent athletes. College production and the amount of times that quarterback leads their team to victory is still somewhat considered when analyzing college quarterbacks, but the amount of tools and skills a quarterback needs to have at his disposal is way more important now than it was 20 to 30 years ago. This is why guys like Cam Newton, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Lamar Jackson have excelled in the NFL despite not testing super well against Bill Parcells' requirements. Because these guys have excellent tools and they are seen as weapons for their teams. I would like to believe that they would have been stars if they played in the 80s and 90s because they are just that talented. But who knows how their careers would have panned out if they played during Bill Parcells' era. To conclude everything that I just said, this study tells us that there are obviously a lot of factors at play when it comes to scouting college quarterbacks and predicting or trying to foresee how they will pan out in the NFL. Bill Parcells' method is just one way to scout NFL prospects, and it's far from being the best way to evaluate prospects in today's NFL climate. In some ways, the probability of a first-round quarterback panning out in the NFL is essentially a 50-50 coin flip based on the data that we gathered for this video. To us, it seems the amount of tools a quarterback has and the situation that he steps into is way more important than some of the metrics that Bill Parcells tracked. But tell us what you think. Do you think Bill Parcells' QB scouting requirements are a bit outdated or are they still relevant in today's game? If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to smash that like button and please share it with a friend or two and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. We are the RFL Show and we will see you in the next one.